Hello, this is Erin Peer, and this is my action research project for EDTP 650 in spring of 2013 at the University of Maryland University College. Pro this project is entitled The Literary Connection Between Music and Poetry. Poetry, particularly poetry written in Elizabethan language, oftentimes presents stumbling blocks to literary comprehension for students. Students themselves are quick to relay their disinterest in this genre. A current ninth grader at a high school in Northern Virginia said two months ago, poetry just doesn't interest me in any way. I don't feel like I could relate to it. It seems boring. They struggle to make the literary connections because they are lacking what constructivists call a new view, meaning they have nothing to compare the poem to. In general, constructivists compare an old view of knowledge to a new constructivist view. Teachers are seeing more and more students who can critically analyze the complex and often richly metaphoric and symbolic hip-hop music they listen to and then effectively articulate that analysis, but fail to exhibit these same analytical skills in class when relating to canonical tests. This author goes on to say, often the failure to develop literacy skills stem not from a lack of intelligence, but from the inaccessibility of the school curriculum to students who do not adhere to the dominant or mainstream culture. This inaccessibility is an outcome of the failure of schools to effectively bridge the contrasting home and school cultures. Simply put, teachers need to embrace the notion that rap music can have a significant cultural relevance in the classroom and can provide the necessary framework for effective literary lessons and discussions. Poems and sonnets are similar to the lyrics of a song and there would be a stronger literary understanding in the classroom if the two were distinctly connected. Those students whose culture is value, valued or promoted through literacy instruction in schools will be more inclined to obtain a high level of literacy than those students whose culture is not valued or promoted. With technology being so prevalent in the world today, it is best said there is a direct correlation between the emergence of new literacies and the need for new instructional practices. The purpose of this study is to prove if students can relate to text in question, to their own interest and understanding, and if so, comprehension will be furthered and negative and or frustrated viewpoints of poetry will be positively changed. So the question stands, will utilizing modern music and lyrics, specifically rap or hip hop, as a study method, contribute to an increase in students' understanding and connection with poetry. Dawn Alyssa Fisher once taught at Washington Middle School in Springfield, Illinois. When she arrived, more than 70% of the students were failing English class. Fisher used hip-hop to study parts of speech and grammar, and by the end of her program, only two students had failed the course. There are an emerging number of articles and reports from teachers who claim that integrating units on hip-hop, rap, music that align with poetry are increasing literary comprehension levels. Well, why music? Yes, it is similar to poetry by way of rhyming. Why is it so popular, yet poetry is not? Part of the appeal of music appears to be its ability to easily deliver the message of the author or the artist, the author or the artist to the listener. Informal polls conducted in the U.S. and Europe indicate that young people are mostly drawn to hip-hop, specifically in music, because it provides them with an honest view of the world. Now, as mentioned previously, the authors note that students who feel their cultures are valued in the classroom are far more likely to acquire a high level of literacy than those students whose cultures are not promoted or valued. In their words, learners must be involved in transformative discourse which legitimizes the wishes, decisions, and dreams of the people involved. Now, these are dramatic statements that are challenging a number of teachers to adapt their curriculums to better fit the needs of their students, rather than requiring the students to conform to the curriculum. There are many misperceptions of hip-hop, rap, and some music in general from academia and the community. They're quick to dismiss it. They don't see rappers as talented artists. Duncan, Andrade, and Morrill draw on educator and theorist Paolo Freire's idea that any development of a literacy campaign must be designed in the native language and appropriated to one's own culture and history. Quote, 
students' language must not be viewed as subordinated and antagonistic to the dominant language, end quote. This does not mean that teachers should abandon language that is accepted as appropriate and intellectual in society. It simply means that teachers need to be open to adapting the classroom lessons in a way that students will understand it in both languages, theirs and the curriculums. Duncan, Andrade, and Morrill assert, quote, given its academic nature and cultural relevance for youth, hip-hop music may provide the necessary cultural frame from which to start effective discussions of literature and literary terminology, end quote. If educators, as constructivists, respect the individual learning styles of the students, they must also respect the idea that rappers are, in a sense, educators too. The high school where this project was presented uh, is in Northern Virginia, mentioned in the opening paragraphs of this paper, and it's divided into the following percentages. Demographics, 43% of the students are Hispanic, 24% are Caucasian, 23% are Asian, 8% African American, and 2% are listed in the other category. 88% of this population is enrolled in general education classes, 15% require English language services and 20% require special education services. 72% of the population is English proficient, leaving 28% with limited English proficiency. 55% of the student population receives free or reduced lunches. Out of the 1,300 plus students in the school, 53% are male and 47% are female. Technology is not an issue. The school has 1,620 computers, 37 interactive boards, 35 mobile laptop carts, and five multimedia presentation carts, as well as 125 projectors. Relating poetry to music is not groundbreaking research, but it is an idea that deserves more credibility as a legitimate teaching tool. As new technologies emerge, the nature, expansion, and definition, definition of literacy change. As new technologies emerge, so does the need for new literacies. The study of poetry cannot remain a paper and pen operation. For many students, traditional media such as canvases, pages, and even wooden stages are antiquated. Our students live in a digital age and they move to their own soundtracks. This project was conducted among, among 72 students in three ninth grade honors English classes. The classroom is technologically friendly. The students have access to a smart board and netbooks on a daily basis. It, this project was designed to shift attitudes and perceptions in regards to poetry and Shakespearean language specifically, so no tests were given over the course of this project. The following assessments were conducted. Two surveys, pre and post project, two partner projects, five class-wide comparisons and accompanying discussions, and one individual project. This project specifically focused on a small collection of William Shakespeare's sonnets. The students, students were first surveyed about their interest level and feelings about poetry as they've come to understand and relate it in their education so far. The survey consisted of five questions, which asked, what is your level of interest in poetry? What is your level of interest in William Shakespeare? How do you feel poetry could relate to your life? How would you rate the difficulty of reading and understanding poetry? And how much do you agree with schools teaching poetry? The students were asked to circle the number that corresponds with their feelings, and as you can see, these were the results. The initial survey served as the baseline of the study, indicating the students' feelings and attitudes towards the aspects of the study. A couple of days later, a pre-survey was conducted. After the pre-survey was conducted, the students were given a sonnet, sonnet number one, and asked to answer the questions below it comprehension questions without the help of the teacher. This was also a gauge for the teacher to understand which students struggled more with comprehension or perhaps weren't as enthusiastic about the topic. The results were as follows. After this initial data gathering, the class examined a list of poetic terms, figurative language, such as alliteration, assonance, consonants, similes, metaphors, repetition, couplets, connotation, onomatopoeias, oxymorons, and puns commonly found in poetry and lyrics. The students subsequently spent time researching some of their favorite song lyrics and identified examples of these literary elements and songs they enjoy listening to. Each group had one literary element to focus on with their partner, and they compiled a list of songs that contained examples of their element. 
we got a wide range of songs, including artists from or artists such as Adele, Rihanna, Bruno Mars, Taylor Swift, and Mumford and Sons. Needless to say, there was a lot of enthusiasm during this phase of the project and 100% participation. Now, with each group's literary element fresh in their minds, they read three sonnets and were responsible for identifying examples of their element in those sonnets, number 34, numbers 34, 80, and 144. Although some groups asked for assistance, many of the groups approached the task with vigor and accurately identified examples within the sonnets, about 88% accuracy. Then came the side-by-side -side comparison between sonnets and songs. The idea of music applied to poetry was introduced, taking caution to avoid hook resentment. Hook resentment is when students are hooked into a unit with lessons about pop culture, only to abandon that popular idea for the canonical shortly thereafter. Students sometimes feel resentful because of the switch and feel like they've been duped. The order does make a difference. A Prezi was presented with each of these comparisons. Um, there was Joe Cocker's You Are So Beautiful with Sonnet 18, The Beatles' When I'm 64 with Sonnet 73, and subsequently Sonnet 58 and Eminem's Love the Way You Lie, Sonnet 23 with 50 Cent's 21 Questions, and Sonnet 138 with Kanye West Heartless. Through detailed Socratic discussions, the students were able to identify literary elements previously discussed and see the thematic connections. After the comparisons, the students were presented with an optional project. Since this particular research project is based around changing attitudes and perceptions on poetry, this was not a mandatory project. The students were free to participate if they wanted, but would not be penalized if they chose not to. 87% of the 72 students completed the project. The students were allowed to choose any of the Shakespeare 154 sonnets, except the five that we had discussed in class, and identify song lyrics that related to the themes of the sonnet. The students were asked to summarize the meaning of the sonnet and make specific line connections to their chosen song. The results were very intriguing. Although most students submitted a rap selection, there were examples from Christian rock, classic rock, country songs, truly reflecting the diversity of the student body. After the projects were submitted, the students were given one last sonnet and asked the same questions as in the beginning to analyze the sonnet and its meaning. The results were as follows. At the beginning of the project, not one single student had full comprehension of the first sonnet. By the end of the project, 36% of the students understood the sonnet and 57% understood at least a fraction of it. This, the classes did not undergo any sort of intensive lesson on Elizabethan English. They were merely presented with a constructivist view of comparison they could relate to, which contributed to a willingness to understand and focus on the task at hand, rather than throw their hands up in frustration over the time it takes to understand poetry. The post-project survey responses are as follows. The success of this project was measured by the incremental responses on assignments and the differences in their responses on the interest surveys. It was hypothesized that the students would perform better on the second sonnet because the unit was designed to build on their interests, which will foster a stronger connection to the literary elements. They did. It was this teacher's belief that the students would be able to critically analyze the poems the same way they analyzed their music, effectively and articulately. They did. It was also expected that most students would answer in a more positive way on the interest surveys as the unit progressed. This also occurred. The surveys were among the most valuable assessments because the purpose of this study was to change the attitudes towards poetry, which was very evident with the side-by-side -side statistics. What was most interesting were the optional comments that students wrote at the end of the pre- and post-project surveys. The project was affected and the initial hypothesis was confirmed. Students did react positively to a constructivist view of teaching a traditionally difficult topic once they were able to make a connection to the material. This teacher would certainly use it again in the classroom and recommend it to others with better applications and modifications aligned to curriculum and state standards. The best music to an English teacher's ears is a student's last words at the end of the unit. I learned I actually kind of like Shakespeare. <laughs>